Hey guys, my name is James Martin and I'm the head tech for Honor Core Industries. Today I'm here to talk to you about some basic maintenance for your R-Series marker and general troubleshooting tips. Here I have a standard TGR2 straight out of the box from production. This marker comes equipped with of course a 14 inch barrel, the RAS rail, TGR2 handguard and of course the standard upper body. A couple things you want to have before doing basic maintenance are a set of metric allen keys. These ones here are just a, a standard set I had in my kit. Um, I recommend a ball in set or a, a driver based set like this. It just allows you to get everything done. If you're doing some magazine maintenance, you'll want a Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, your paintball lubricant of choice. Um, I recommend any good paintball oil. Um, I mean Planet Eclipse, Tech T, Tipman, Spider. Um, here I just have some basic silicone oil. You'll of course want a air tank. This here is a 13 cubic inch by Ninja. Highly recommend them. The recommended output for our TGR and R series systems is 850 PSI or more. This will ensure you can hit 300 FPS in terms of velocity and will ensure optimal performance when it comes to the system recocking. So we'll start off with just some basic disassembly. You want to make sure before you do this that there is no air attached to the gun, there's no paint in the chamber, and you've of course removed any dirt, debris, anything else that may impede your way. First thing you'll want to do is just remove your barrel. You can clean this out at this point with a fuzzy swab or a pull through if you like. For now, put it aside. The second thing you want to do is go to the rear of the block here. This is where your two takedown pins are located. And you can see they're both one on the top, one on the bottom. These are toolless. You do not need any tools to remove them. You can generally just pull them out with your fingers. If they are a little bit stiff to remove, there's dirt, debris, anything else in the way, you can use the other pin, just like this, to push on it. With this one here, I can obviously use my hands. One big thing you want to note before removing the final pin is this is under spring tension. So you will want to put a hand on it and pull out the other pin. Set this aside. And then again, just pull the block off. There are two O-rings here on either side of the transfer tube. If you get any leaks from the air block or between the air block and the body, that's where this is going to come from. You want to make sure these are lubricated, again with some oil. This is fresh out of box, so they've already been lubricated. If you get any leaks here, any wiggle, replace these. We include spares with the kit out of the box. For now, you can put this aside. The next thing you want to do is just remove your front caulking rod. So, you will notice on this there is a, a flat head groove here. This allows you to snug it down during play, it keeps it from wiggling, moving around, and also allows you to remove it if you found it's been screwed in a bit too tight. There is a spring on here, this is what recocks the handle. You'll want to make sure there's no dirt and debris on here, and this spring can move freely, and there's no rust or anything else covering it. It is stainless, so you can get it wet. It won't really rust away or become damaged. Put that aside. You'll then, easy way to extract your, your internals here, and this is something I always do, is just pivot your lower. You can see here, it allows you to pivot it down. This just moves the sear and the hammer out of the way and, and make sure you're not gonna damage anything. You'll then just wanna pull back on your caulking handle. I generally pull it back to this point. This allows you to remove your rear velocity spring. And this little rubber donut here is what we call a bumper. And this just keeps the hammer from damaging the air block itself. And keeps the spring in line to give you that nice consistent velocity. If you do happen to lose this piece, um, there is actually one in the bottom end of the air block. I don't know if you guys can Get a good shot of that there. See, it's just in the lower tube. 
And this just means if you guys happen to lose it by chance, misplace it, or you don't even know it exists, nothing's going to happen to the gun in terms of damage. You know, it won't really affect operation. Next step you want to do is just pull back the caulking handle. This will actually allow you to extract the hammer itself. You can just pull back, pull off your hammer, it's this piece here. And this just has, as you can see, there's an O-ring on the very top. This O-ring is responsible for recaulking the gut. You want to make sure this is lubricated well with your oil of choice. Do it lightly, don't include any excess or gob on any grease in there. As there's a really nice tight fitment between this and the lower tube. And this can cause the gun to not recaulk properly and obviously hurt performance in the field. If you get the gun making a, a burp noise or it doesn't recaulk, where it won't shoot and you caulk the gun, you want to check this O-ring. This is an 11 by 1 by 5 millimeter metric O-ring and it's a 90 durometer. It's the same ones on the outside of the valve and the front valve plug. So it's quite easy to replace. Now, a lot of people sending me emails, asking me on Facebook, you know, I've checked it, it looks good. Um, it's actually really hard to see any damage to an O-ring sometimes. So if your gun displays this behavior, please replace it, re-oil it, and reinstall your hammer. For now, just put this aside. The next piece here is the bolt and the caulking handle. These two pieces here, as you can see, actually interlink. There's a sliding slot that this rides in. You want to make sure that the slot's free of any dirt and debris, and there's no excessive burrs or anything in there that can just keep it from moving back and forth nice and uh, smoothly during play. Um, these are made of 6000 series aluminum and hard anodized, so they're quite tough. And on the front here, you can see there's actually a, a little threading. This is where the caulking rod screws in. I generally want to make sure this is free and clear of any dirt and debris as well. Set this aside. This is our Atlas bolt. This is what allows us to obviously fire the paintball and gives the gun its sound signature and good efficiency. Um, this gun is equipped with the MK Pro kit, which comes standard on all honor core markers. And this just uh, is a small update we did to the bolt. Um, this gives you the radius front and the two O-ring seals here that are enlarged from the previous versions. And this gives the gun a little bit better efficiency and allows the bolt to glide smoothly during the firing cycle just giving you a gun that's a little bit gentler on paint. Um, these O-rings, a little neat fact here guys, these O-rings actually don't seal anything unless the bolt is forward and the gun is firing a ball. So there's no way these can actually cause a leak or any loss of air um, that you'd audibly hear when you air the gun up. Um, these two here just help seal the front of the, the gun's chamber and the breech during firing. And these two rear ones actually just help keep air from going around the bolt and keep it going down the barrel so you get that good efficiency um, out of your 13 CI or, or remote line based system. All you want to do with these O-rings here guys, just make sure there's no dirt and debris on them. You can easily remove them from your groove if you want. And as you can see here, this one's actually already lightly lubricated. You just want to make sure when these are inserted into the upper receiver that this glides nice and smoothly. You don't want to get hot or, or, or hung up on anything inside. Um, one big thing is if you have a gun that, that burps or won't fully cycle uh, and you've replaced your hammer o-ring, this o-ring is good. One thing that you can do is actually remove all of these o-rings off the bolt, reinstall it in the gun, and if the gun shoots with no issues, it'll actually mean that one of these is swollen and causing excess friction in the, the upper breech. And this is going to cause the hammer to slow down and keep the gun from releasing enough air to properly recaulk. Uh, and this is just a very, very easy thing to do. Um, these O-rings are a 14, um, 014 standard O-ring. And uh, these are just a normal 70 durometer, very, very common size. Um, since they don't, again, seal anything, uh, I generally just keep them clean. It won't affect any adverse performance in the gun. One thing I do want to mention is if you do play in a sandy environment where you get a lot of dirt and debris during play, you want to make sure that's clean as it can actually get trapped uh, between the um, bolt and the breech and just cause some um, excessive wear on the breech, which while it won't affect anything performance-wise, 
Um, cosmetically, for some, it can be a little bit of an annoyance. Uh, this is made of a 6000 series aluminum and features a Venturi face you can see here. And this just keeps air directed um, properly around the ball and gives the gun a little bit of a quieter sound signature um, when used with a ported barrel. It's lightweight and obviously gives the gun a, a good shot as well and keeps the gun quite consistent and accurate um, when used with a good air system. Once you've removed all the guts of the, the upper receiver, you can swab this with a breech if you like. Uh, swab, sorry, swab this with a, a fuzzy swab. Just remove any paint, dirt, debris, um, or if you like, you can even wash it out. Um, if I am going to wash out my lower receiver or upper receiver, I do like to separate the two pieces. And again, there's just another toolless pin you can see here. All you want to do is push it out, pull it out of the receiver, put it aside, and then you can split the gun in two. This is your upper, complete with RAS rail, and then of course your lower with magwell, as you guys can see here in the magazine well. Your mag release, which I always like to check for function, make sure it can smoothly move up and down. And there is a screw right about here. You can see there's actually a little cutout. You want to make sure this is snug. As if this comes loose and happens to come loose during play, uh, it'll keep, um, it obviously keeps the mag release assembled. And if this comes loose, you, you can lose your mag release. You'll have to give me a call and, and you know, wait while I send you a new one. I'm just going over some trigger group maintenance on the lower here. Just to remove the trigger group, you'll see that there's actually two little screws that secure the safety in here. If these aren't tight, um, your safety can wobble, and if they become loose enough, you can actually lose the safety. You'll just want to make sure these are snug prior to play or during maintenance. And to access the trigger group, you'll just want to take your 1.5mm Allen key and remove these. There's one on the left and one on the right. You can actually see here a little machine screw. And there's two of them. So please don't try and lose these. If you do, give us a ring. We'll get you hooked up. Put this one aside. And there's one on the other side as well. And once you remove them, you can actually remove the safeties. And these aren't plastic like on a lot of other guns. It's actually a cast aluminum. And these are actually machine threaded, so it's a nice, tight, snug fit. And uh, once these are screwed down properly, it results in a very really smooth action. It means your safety is always going to work and, and keep the gun from shooting when it's activated. Put that aside. I'm just going to remove the other one here. Once you've done that, you removed your other safety paddle. All you have to do to actually remove the trigger group is push up on the trigger. Let's try to remove it and separate it from the lower. You can see here there's a bunch of room, and this is the trigger group. Mounts for the safeties, and I'm actually holding onto the steer. So you can see here this is the trigger group safety. So this has a trigger with a return spring, your steer with return spring, and of course the housing. You want to make sure this is free of any dirt and debris. The trigger can freely move. Your sear moves up and down. There's no need to really take it much farther apart than this. It's a self-contained unit and doesn't require um, any service um, other than obviously cleaning. Um, the sear is made of a hardened steel, so it's very resistant to wear. I'm, I've had one with about 20,000 plus shots on it with no lubrication. And it's still fine and shows zero signs of um, any abrasive or damage to it. Um, so you just want to make sure this can move up and down. That your sear face here is square. You can see this one's nice and flat. And obviously your trigger works. Um, you can clean out any of the threading or any of the, the dirt and debris that may work its way up into the, the actual trigger group itself. And then with the actual lower here, you now have access to the magwell and the actual frame of the gun. Wipe it out if you like, 
clean out any dirt and debris that may collect. And at this point, I always like to, again, look over my safety. It's the same 1.5 mil Allen key. Move the other screw here. Sorry about that. And again, you can just take this and actually insert it in and tighten down the screw that, that snugs down the uh, mag release. There's a spring in here. It is captured by the actual lower receiver itself. And again, I don't find this needs much maintenance. If you do need to clean it out, you get broken paint debris in here. You can actually wash this out. Hot water, a hose, whatever you need. And then you'll be good to go. Now, one small thing that a lot of people probably don't know about is you can actually change out this trigger guard. So all you do is remove a pin, a little punch here. I'm not going to do that today, but I'm going to show you a cool little feature. If you pivot it down, you'll see it pops out. And there's actually a little adjustment point here. And this just adjusts the ball bearing so it'll stay snug in the frame. I have mine set a little bit loose for this video, but it's actually adjustable. So if you find that this is um, it's knocked out of place during play, don't fret. Just grab a, one of the metric down keys, tighten it up, and then you can snap it back into place. Or change it out for a trigger guard of your preference. Although this is a glove guard, and definitely a very popular aftermarket option on other guns. Other than that, I'm just going to quickly go over your upper receiver here. If you happen to break any paint in the gun, or there's dirt and debris from a hard day of play, you can actually take this whole assembly as it is and wash it out. Um, submerge it in water if you like, hose it out, and all you're going to have to do is re-lubricate and, and reassemble the gun. Um, other than that, I mean, pretty straightforward, self-contained unit. In our next series of videos, I will go over the valve disassembly and uh, disassembly of the RAS rail systems as well. If you have any more questions, concerns, or any parts or other support for any Honorcore product, you can contact us via email, tech at honorcore.com, myself, Jimmy, at honorcore.com, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, under Honorcore Paintball, or you can give me a call at 1-604-278-6564. Thanks and have a good day and hopefully enjoy using our products. As a group, just remove these, pull them out. Can we reshoot that? I'll just pull one out and show you guys. Is your machine screw? Let me reshoot that.